Welcome everybody. It's good to make time for reflection. It's in these moments of stopping that we hear again about the lo love God has for each one of us and about the care God offers us all. So let's make room to let God in. Let's open our ears, our eyes, our minds and our hearts to God's possibilities for us and for this world. Ever living God, you have the whole of this world in your hands. Every mountain and bug, every animal there is on land, every fish in the sea and every bird in the sky, you have brought into being. We marvel at your amazing creativity and at the way this world continues to evolve. Thank you for watching over everything and for standing by your people, even when we doubt you and ignore you. Help us, we pray, to know the gift you have given us in life itself and in all those who share that life with us. May we be grateful for nature and for each other and may we care for all your hands have made. Creator of all, thank you too for the gift of your Son to show us how to live and love well. May we follow his example as together we pray the words he taught his friends. We say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. When Jesus saw the crowd, he went across Lake Galilee. A teacher of the law of Moses came up to him and said, Teacher, I'll go anywhere with you. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man doesn't have a place to call his own. Another disciple said to Jesus, Lord, let me wait till I bury my father. Jesus answered, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. After Jesus left in a boat with the disciples, a terrible storm suddenly struck the lake and the waves started splashing into their boat. Jesus was sound asleep, so the disciples went over to him and woke him up. They said, Lord, wake up, save us before we drown. But Jesus replied, why are you so afraid? You surely don't have much faith. Then he got up and ordered the wind and the waves to calm down. Everything was calm. The men in the boat were amazed and said, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I suppose there were no weather forecasts back then, and Jesus and his friends weren't in Scotland, so they were probably used to better weather, and that's why they were taken by surprise. But then some of Jesus' friends were fishermen. Why would they not be used to keeping a weather eye open? Ah, you're right. But even with years of experience, it can be hard to anticipate when a sudden squall might blow up. That's true. 
And even these days, fishermen know that the sea can be, well, pretty unpredictable, really. Jesus and his friends were on a lake trying to cross over from one side to the other. I think Jesus was looking for some peace because the crowds had been following everywhere and wanting him to heal folk left, right and centre. It was non-stop for him. A little wonder that he fell asleep in the boat then, eh? Aye. And it must have been a deep sleep for him not to have wakened up when the boat started pitching and rolling and rising Oh, and stop, falling. stop, stop. You're making me seasick. Waves coming up over the sides and Jesus' friends trying to keep their balance as they slithered from one side of the boat to the other. The waves rocking them in every direction possible. They must have been petrified that they were going to end up overboard. Stop. I'm feeling green. This could get messy. But seriously, it had to be really bad if even the fishermen among them were worried. I think Lake Galilee has a bit of a reputation for its sudden squalls. Yeah. And while though it was though, Jesus slept. As I say, he was probably utterly exhausted. He'd been healing so many people. He'd have been feeling drained. I imagine that the last thing Jesus' friends wanted to do was to waken him. But they really did think they were gone, didn't they? Aye, they were convinced they were going to drown, so they woke Jesus up. And he calmed the wind and the waves. And as he did, Jesus calmed his friends too. This is a moment that left its mark on Jesus' friends. It's a moment that stayed with them forever. Mind you, that's hardly surprising. They thought their boat was about to sink. I know, but do you not think that this was, if you forgive the pun, a watershed moment? for the disciples. Do you not think that this was the point at which they went, whoa, who is this guy? But would they not have been saying that all day? Jesus had been curing people of all sorts of ailments. He even brought a wee girl back from the dead. And did Jesus' friends not already have an inkling that Jesus was someone pretty special? Yeah, but what he did in the boat took things to a totally new level. It really was an extraordinary moment in which the friends caught a glimpse of something in Jesus that they hadn't seen before. Something truly awesome. Okay, so what makes you say that? Well, I mean, we heard Matthew's take on the boat trip, right? But Mark and Luke both tell the same story. I think it was a day when they weren't just petrified of the weather. I think Jesus himself put the wind up his friends. <laughs> because? Well, because up until this point, I don't think Jesus' friends had fully grasped quite who Jesus was and what he could do. On this lake though, when everything was scarily chaotic, they saw Jesus in a new light and it blew their minds. You mean when Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves? Exactly. Peace, be still and everything went quiet. I bet his friends just stood there with their mouths open and their hearts beating 19 to the dozen as they tried to take in what they just witnessed. How did he do that? Who is this, they said. That even the wind and the waves obey him. You're right. This was a turning point for Jesus' friends. This Jesus was no ordinary preacher and teacher. No ordinary healer. Even the wind and the waves obeyed him. Wow. Just wow. Jesus
last time we were left astounded by God? When was the last time some thought, some feeling, some unexpected insight into God and Jesus took our breath away? <laughs> it's not likely to be an everyday occurrence, although perhaps it should be. But does it happen at all? We say we believe in a God for whom all things are possible. We say we believe in a God of surprises, the kind of surprise that brought Jesus into this world. We say God is a God of miracles and that faith can move mountains. And yet for most of us, most of the time, our faith journey is fairly mundane, routine, perhaps even dull. How come? Faith is not a science. It can't be known completely. In fact, faith's whole rationale is to carry us to what is beyond belief. Which means that it really should make our jaws drop as our minds and hearts are blown away by the things that God shows us and by the insights God gives us. And in the way God, especially in Jesus, reveals himself to us. So why is this? not happening. The disciples, Jesus' friends, got into the boat with him on the day of the storm. And when they did, they had no idea what was going to happen next. It may even be that they thought they were looking out for Jesus by leaving him to rest in the back of the boat. Perhaps knowing how many people they just left behind them and how many were likely to be waiting for Jesus on the other side, perhaps Perhaps they took a circuitous route across the lake to let Jesus sleep as long as possible. They could do that for him. After all, a number of them were fishermen. Messing around in boats was what they did. It was second nature to them. Content in their own capabilities, they sailed on. But then, out of nowhere, the wind got up, and soon that wind was uncomfortably strong. The fishermen among them may well have smiled at the worried looks on their companions' faces, but they, they were used to wind. Only, only the wind got stronger and stronger. The waves got higher and higher and sloshed over the sides of the boat until even the fishermen felt the panic rising, no longer in control. They did the only thing they could do. They woke Jesus up, desperate for his help. That was when Jesus calmed everything and everyone. And that was when Jesus' friends suddenly understood how extraordinary Jesus was. And they were left speechless and paralyzed and overawed. Who is this? they asked. But even the wind and the waves obey him. And their minds raised. Could it be? But like Jesus' disciples, when they set out across that lake, could it be that we think we're in control? And maybe even that we know what Jesus needs from us and wants. Are we on faith autopilot? If we are, then we're not really living faith fully, are we? We're not really letting God take us beyond belief. We're staying comfortably and safely within what we think we know God is and wants and is about. And there's no shock factor there. And God is shocking. Thinking of Jesus in particular, he shocked not only his disciples, he shocked everyone by the company he kept and by the people he touched and healed and taught. And of course, by his willingness too to lose his own life so that you and I and everyone else can gain ours. The thing is, Jesus is not for emergencies only. God doesn't mean for us to wait for a crisis before we ask for his help. Perhaps if we were to spend more time in Jesus' company and speak and listen to him more, we would find our hearts being stirred, our eyes opening, and our jaws dropping in ways that we've never dreamt of. No need for a, a drama first. Good for thought, isn't it?
Sometimes, Lord Jesus, it can be hard to let go of what is safe and familiar, to let you take us to where our thoughts have never been. Sometimes, Lord Jesus, it can be frightening to look at people and at things in ways we have never considered. But there are times too, Lord, when it is so good to be stopped in our tracks. There are times when it's so refreshing and exciting to have you open our eyes to what we have never seen before and how wonderful it is to have our breath taken away by how amazing and wonderful and outrageous you are. Give us the courage to step out in faith and to put our hand in yours as your plans for us, for our communities and our world unfold. Lord Jesus, the whole of this world needs to make room for you to do what you do best. We need to make room for you to get alongside those who need you most. Help us, we pray, to see you and the people left to create homes from other people's waste. Help us to see you and the homeless we walk by in the city streets. Help us to see you in those others laugh at or talk down to or ignore altogether. Don't let us, we pray, look away or turn away. Instead, help us to do as you would do. Help us to speak out and to reach out and to hold out your hope. We pray for governments and for those with authority to help the most vulnerable in the world. Give them the courage and the willingness to work towards a fairer world where the hungry are fed, sick are cared for, and where people of all ages are loved and respected. These things we ask in your name, Lord Jesus, who came in love, for love's sake. Amen. <laughs>